So we'll go ahead and uh, get started, it's 310. Uh, my name is Edgar Nunez, I'm one of the co-coordinators for the A2 Data Dive along with Priya in the back. Uh, she's handing out uh, flyers. I want to welcome you all to today's Data Jam. So it's just a uh, pre-workshop for the Data Dive that's happening on November 9th and 10th where um, we're hoping that the at that point the data that you're going to be looking at today is going to be at a point where people could just dive right into it because they'll have a research problem already uh, thought out, they'll know exactly um, some important <laughs> variables to look at, and that's uh, today's goal is to really figure out that pathway to be like, we have the research problem, how do we get into uh, finding solutions? Um, at our last data dive, uh, data jam, we were just do thinking of um, looking at some, the structure of data, just in case you weren't able to join us, uh, but that video link is available, will be available online, so, um, Watch out for that, and then we'll be also be posting today's video online as well. So, um, there's food in the back, water, that's for everybody here, so feel free to indulge in that. And uh, today I want to introduce Emily, who is a data manager over at the Institute of Social Research, and she'll be guiding us in our uh, presentation today on data inquiry. Uh, we'll be doing this for around uh, 20 minutes, and then afterwards we're going to uh, introduce uh, the breakout session, like the, the activity that we're going to do during that, those small groups, and uh, then we'll just be able to look at that data in person. Um, but once again, thank you all for being here, and let's give a hand for Emily. So I am Emily Blaschek. I am a data manager with the University of Michigan Institute for Social Research for a branch called the Survey Research Operations. And they're the ones that really uh, make the survey happen. Um, so as Edgar introduced, I'm gonna give you a short presentation about my role and then data uh, concepts in answering questions. And then you'll break into your small groups based on the community organizations you're working with, and then we'll return to the larger group. Um, so we'll first learn what a data manager does, and then uh, introduce concepts involved in answering questions, and then uh, you'll begin to uh, use these concepts in your efforts to answer questions based on your data. So what does a data manager do? Uh, basically, we're the the one who speaks for the data and makes sure that uh, it's collected in a way that meets the goals of the research. <coughs> That's the primary thing we always have to think about, which is, because uh, the programmer, they're really keen to design a system that's uh, easy for them to program. And I have to be like, no, the data needs to be in this format so then the questions can be answered. Um, so that's it, the first part when a study is first funded you get together and you design the structure of the databases. And then as the study is ongoing, you have to, the data manager ensures that the data is being collected properly and uh, then also solves any issues that come up with it. So you have to be twofold. You have to diagnose and fix any data issues. Uh, so throughout, we also report on the key measures of the survey. So in order to keep the survey on budget, uh, you produce reports on how many interviews have been conducted and how many people are refusing, and it helps the study stay within their uh, allotted amount of money. And then, finally, the data manager will also deliver the data set to the client and answer any questions that the client has about why the data is the way it is. So you have to be very familiar with all of the data that you work with. And um, most data managers work on about three studies at a time, I tend to be the like little study person. Little and little and SRO is about a thousand sample members. Um, giant the the big surveys have about twenty thousand sample members in them. But uh, you provide the data set, so I tend to work on about six projects, seven at a time. Um, so you got to keep track of them. All. So to summarize, the data manager is the behind the scenes person 
that uh, ensures that the researcher will get the data that they, they designed. Um, and this involves a lot of problem solving. And then uh, you also then have to do some reorganization to get it from <coughs> how the database stores it to something that's analyzable. Okay, so now into addressing questions using data. Uh, we'll talk about survey data versus administrative data, and we'll decide what you want to know, and then exploring your data and using your data. So there's two main concepts of data, which is survey data, which is collected by asking selected members of a population questions. And the selected people are sampled in a way they're designed to represent a larger group of people. And it's always collected with some sort of research goal in mind. And so, for an example, a survey question would be, what is your highest level of education? And then administrative data is what we have here for the data dive. Um, it's collected by an organization or a centralized source. And it's usually collected with some sort of non-research goal in mind. Uh, for example, the library is interested in keeping track of who has what materials. And uh, so to parallel the survey data example, uh, if you had enrollment records, you'd use that to track the number of degrees. So by going back to the library, if you asked a person, you know, how many materials did you check out on your account in this last year, you'd not get a very reliable answer. Whereas with an administrative data set, that's going to give you basically the true answer of how many materials that they, they checked out. But if you wanted to know what they thought of those materials and if they planned to read them again, the administrative data would not be able to answer that question. So you are at the first step. You, we have our concepts that we want to address. The YMCA is interested in behavioral patterns and usage by their member types. And the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation is interested in the historical perspective of funding patterns. And the Ann Arbor District Library is interested in their branch and patron usage patterns. Um, so then you can start to sort of explore your data. And there's important questions to ask uh, the data, which is, why was it collected? All data is collected for some purpose, whether it be to find out uh, factors that are associated with heart disease, or if it's you know to keep for a library to keep track of how many materials they have out. Um, and then, as referring back to Kyle's s speech last data jam, he talked about how the data is structured, and that's really important to know too before you start analyzing it. Um, and then you might want to think about uh, who or what might be missing from your data. Because there is systematic mi missingness and there's random missingness. And a systematic missingness means that the missingness is predictable. And uh, that would change your answer if you had that data. Whereas random missingness means, you know, occasionally the computer doesn't, you know, it, there was an electrical storm and some records were lost. That's random missingness and you can accept that into your, into your variance that you have. Um, and so and then if the data is a sampled source, you should think about what group was the it statistically designed to represent. Uh, because it may not match with what group you want to infer on. And uh, so you have to adjust your conclusions based on what sample design was used. And then if your data is from a population, uh, how does it relate to your population of interest? Uh, so for our data, we have population data. We have all of the records that we can have. We have in our universe, which is what people refer to as a, as a, as a population in data, our universe is, is the data set. And you can't go any further than what we have. You can't say anything about Michigan libraries from the Ann Arbor library data set. Um, so you would stop there. Because uh, it's not statistically designed to represent anything but what's contained within. Um, so you can have great questions, but be unable to answer them with the data that you have. 
And most of the time, as analysts, we're working with data collected in a way that we did not have any say in. And it, oftentimes it was collected for a very different purpose than what we're using it for. Uh, whether or not they had a different research question than you do, or if it was collected to complete tasks. So, but even people who write surveys uh, don't always get the information that they want. Uh, it happens that you uh, forgot to ask a question, or you, when you wrote the question, uh, you didn't have a certain answer category that you should have. Um, and then it can, data can also be collected in a way that doesn't meet your research goals. Uh, so there's a few ways to address that. Uh, so let's say your problem is that you don't have uh, the variable that matches exactly what you're interested in, but uh, you have a variable that has the same question, but the answers are in the wrong place. So let's say your variable is highest education <coughs> level, and you have six categories, but you're just interested in whether or not they attended college. So you could recode each of the categories into their respective one and zero. And you might have to do some justification about where you put associate's degree. Um, because a two-year degree, some people will say that it is a college degree, and other people will say no. And it depends on what your research question is. Um, and you can just have to justify what you decide. That's, there's no wrong way to do it. So a second problem is that uh, you have uh, an interested category, but their data just isn't there. Uh, so you may stop and think about what factors are associated with your variable of interest. So let's say you're interested in your current health status, and there's a series of questions about the current medications the respondent takes, and there's a series of questions about conditions diagnosed in the past two years. And either one of these could fit what, you're, what you want to do but um, they both start to approximate what you're, what you're trying to get at. Okay, and then there's combining sources of data. And this can be done in across time and across data source. So uh, oftentimes surveys will put out a data set every year. They put out the 1999, for example, my uh, example here is the National Health Interview Survey. There, it's a survey conducted by the U.S. Census Bureau, and every year they go out and they interview Americans about uh, all kinds of health-related factors. And then they just put out a data set every year, and there's no attempt to uh, make it so you can analyze 1990 and 2000. So that's where the IHIS comes in, which is a project at the Minnesota Population Center, and they put all of the data from each year that the Census Bureau put out and into one database. And they examine all of the documentation, everything from the instruction manual the interviewer received to the statistical reports that they issue to make sure that you can compare 1990 to 2000 for each variable. And so if you're interested in that, you can go to IHIS.us. And then there's also a cross source. And that's collecting and combining data from similar information, but from disparate sources. So that's an example is the Integrated Fertility Survey, which is the, here at the University of Michigan. And they uh, have combined from several fertility surveys so to combine those sources into one. And they do a similar process of reviewing the documentation to ensure that the data is comparable. So um, that's really, it's, it's all again about justifying why you combine the data. Um, as long as you can come up with a reason why you did it, then, um, well, it, I mean, I guess it has to be kind of a good reason. But <laughs> you can't just be like, because I want it to. Um, but, you, as long as you have some sort of act academic justification for why these data are comparable, you can put them together. So uh, major points to remember is that data managers work with researchers to ensure that the data is collected, organized, and retrievable. 
And it's important to think about why your data was collected. And uh, for you, the data is administrative. So you can think about what that means you, when you use it. Uh, and you may need to reorganize your data to answer your questions. So even if you've taken a statistical course, uh, you can, it still can be daunting because when you're in stats course, you know, they give you your homework and you get a data set and all the data is there. You just need to know how to program the formulas. Um, you don't need to fix the data. And oftentimes in the real world, you, there's a lot of fixing that needs to go on. And so you can reorganize your data by creating new variables based on recoding of existing ones, using variables that approximate what your interests are, and then harmonizing sources from across time or across different sources. And if you ever want, if you have any more questions uh, after this, you can contact me at this address. Um, but I can answer questions now, too. No? Okay. I actually have a quick question. Yes. Is there a way to, let's say you have administrative data, but you decide you want to use it for a research project. Is there anything specific that you have to do uh, in order to be able to do that? Or anything specific you should keep in mind? Um. Well, just that, yeah, you're really only going to be able to answer questions about things you can see mm -hmm. that are observable. Um, so that's one of the limitations of administrative data, but it also then has that benefit of being like a much more reliable source. So there's this very famous study. I, my master's degree is in survey methods from here at the University of Michigan. And we were taught about this study where they asked parents uh, for their child's immunization record. And when you go up to a parent, even when they are, they are literally carrying the kid out of the, the doctor's office, they can't remember what shots their kid got. They're terrible at remembering it. But if you have them go get the piece of paper with the immuniz immunization record on it, then you get good data. But like, they thought maybe it was a time thing because they did it like several, like, when the appointment had been several months ago and they did it literally in the doctor's waiting room and it didn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. So um, that can have uh, a real advantage with administrative data. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like if you are doing research, you should keep in mind the availability of administrative data because mm -hmm. it might in fact be a better source, even if it is a little more constrained. Yes, yeah, and you can always sort of uh, it has an, its advantages in that in the in the observable phenomenon sense, but if you wanted to know, you know, what they, if you were looking at the phenomenon of people anti-vaccine people, mm -hmm. then there would be much more that you are missing about uh, how they felt about things. Mm -hmm. um, an exception to that, so in our next stage, I will do some simple statistics. But if you know that the uh, one is survey data and one's administrative, um, can you pull the same um, inferences, or are there different formulas that you'll have to consider? Um, I don't think so. No, all of it will be will apply. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hello. Hi. I'm Tom McPhee. I'm executive director of uh, an Ann Arbor based award-winning nonprofit, the World Animal Awareness Society. And we've been conducting a survey mm -hmm. of dogs in the city of Detroit for the last three years for the American Strays Project. I'm wondering if it's possible for our organization to participate in this process and to gain some administrative data as it goes into our feature film that we're putting together mm -hmm. and an overall program that has worldwide impact. Well, I kind of was just invited to speak here, so I have to turn that over to Edgar about about that. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah. So we uh, we have the three organizations for this year, but we're definitely more than happy to talk to organizations who are interested in participating for next year. Um, so if you want to talk with us afterwards, we're we're, we're looking to publish um, probably early 2014 preliminary information. Mm -hmm. um, but we would love to discuss for future, but if anyone's interested in participating outside of the team data dive, I'd love to hear from them. Definitely, yeah.
It could be, it could be a great opportunity for everyone we're, to. We're developing the application for dog rescuers around the world as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for sharing. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. How do you go about finding variables that is related to what you're trying to conclude? Um, I'd often go like you're as you do research to come up with your questions. You're reading a lot of the literature, and so you can see it amongst the literature what people are using, and that can give you uh, an an idea and inform your own analysis. You can see what they used. That often is really helpful to go and read what other people have done for their analysis. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that last question in mind, can you explain what the proxy variables are? That you're Okay, so that's basically, you decide, like, there wasn't a question in the data that says, like, what is your current health status? Uh, would you rate it on a scale of very good to very poor? Uh, and you might even, that question might even be in there, and you might decide that you don't think that that's uh, an accurate idea. You want to know their medical health status, because people can have, uh, health conditions, but still consider themselves in good health, if that makes any sense. Like, for themselves, they feel healthy. They do not, they're not comparing themselves to someone else. They're saying, well, you know, my cancer is in remission, so I am really good. Um, so basically, it's variables that are surrounding your topic of interest. So, you know, your medications and your diagnoses and out everything together get at the concept of health. Anything else? Oh, back there, yes. Sorry, still about variables. So <laughs> say that you have two variables that you find out from your research that other people are doing. So how do you know which one plays a more important role? Um, well, that's, that probably will get, they'll get into it a little bit more that next time, but um, let's say you are looking at um, the health status versus um, physical activity. <coughs> and you just start to do cross, uh, simple frequencies, like a cross-tabulation on your data. And whichever one uh, had a better uh, correlation with your factor of interest, you'd probably want to go with that one. Yeah. But yeah, you, can, you start to play around and you see which ones are correlated. With your, with your outcome of interest, and then you can start to uh, look at what uh, you want to do. And for, th for this data dive, really the answers are much more exploratory. They're more interested in like, how does group A compare to group B? Whereas you're not really trying to say like, group, at least I don't, I don't maybe you are in the future, but trying to say like, group B is three times more likely to check out CDDs than group A. I mean, maybe that would be actually interesting. So in that case, uh, you are sort of, you're building a model, and you'd want to control for other factors um, in order to say that it is, in fact, health status that uh, is the predictive factor in this. But yeah, I don't want to get too much into stats, because that's the next data, <laughs> data jam. But um, you just really start to do simple comparisons of, of the frequencies. Thanks. Mm -hmm. else? Else? No. So, um, thanks. And I'm going to stick around, too. So. <laughs> <laughs>